Hi there, good evening or good afternoon or good morning even wherever you are and whatever time you're watching this. I'm a little bit earlier than usual today but I just wanted to jump on here quickly to talk to you about something very belly dancey. So we're going to talk today about using um, contraction and also release for belly dance and specifically we're going to look at hip work. Um, and we'll get into that in a little bit of detail in a moment. Before I do so, I just want to remind you that if you're watching, please do give me a little thumbs up or a heart if you are enjoying this. And if you have a friend uh, who might benefit from this, then please do tag them or share it with them. So we're going to talk about contraction and release for belly dance hip work, how I like to do it. Obviously, there's so many different stylizations in belly dance. You may have a different way of doing it, but if you want to give this one a try, then please do so. So I'm going to start off by talking about uh, the tack seam, which I like to do in an ATS stylization. So if you're an ATS dancer, you'll probably be familiar with uh, the principles of contraction and release anyway. And I'm just going to talk about the tack seam briefly. So if you're not an ATS dancer, a tack seam in ATS um, or in a lot of styles of uh, fusion, tribal fusion, is a figure of eight from down to up. So the hips coming down and then back up and down and up. So the way we do this in ATS is actually taking all of the weight, say, onto the left leg, for example, releasing everything out of the non-weighted leg. So my right foot is free. Hopefully you can just about see my foot in the mirror there. And there's no energy. Like I really want to think about all of the energy coming out of that hip. It's really released. And then I'm going to use the muscles in, my, um, in the side of my body to pick up my hip and then switch the weight. So we've got this... Uh, release happening now the release is on the left side i'm using my oblique muscles to pick up the hip pick up the hip pick up the hip and then this is the contraction and then i'm releasing again on the other side so a nice way to practice this is on one leg you can get a real nice release in the leg that you're not standing on it's a little bit more challenging to release on the leg that you're balancing with but it's a good way to get that idea of release and then contracting in the obliques and release and then contract in the obliques let's just switch feet so i'm going to put all my weight on my right and i'm releasing the left hip contracting release and contracting in the right so i could spend hours and hours on this but i have a bunch of other different little tips tips to give you for different types of hip work um, if you have any questions at any time please do feel free to pop them in the comments box if I see them now I will answer them right away or if you're watching this after the broadcast please do tag me and I will jump on and ask, answer the question later on so we're talking about contraction and release for our hip work in belly dance so I like to think about using the obliques for my hip work, uh, contracting the oblique muscles, which are the muscles round about here. Please note that so many other muscles are at work. Like I don't believe that we can fully isolate um, to just one muscle or one muscle group, but I like to place the focus here because um, we could use our low back muscles, for example. Um, but I tend to find a lot of people have a lot of tension in their low back anyway, just from our day-to-day -day lives, sitting a lot, standing a lot, whatever. Our, our low back can become a little bit tired and our abdominals can be um, a little bit weak. So if we really actually try and bring the focus here, it's helping to take some of that tension out of the low back. And also, Belly dance is a very front facing dance style. You know, we're often facing, if we're performing, we're facing our audience front on. So we want to get a nice visual. And particularly with this tack seam that we spoke about for the moment, you get this real nice contraction. And then as you release, you can really release the belly. If you've been trying to suck in your belly all your life, let it go because it will look awesome in your belly dance. Anyway, so as I said, we were moving away from the tack seam. Just coming to single hips now. Still, I'm really bringing that focus into my obliques. And when I'm going slowly, 
I like to put a metronome on sometimes just so that I can really make sure that I'm nice and clean on time. I'm going to keep my arms down at my sides for the moment because if I bring it up here you might not see so well. Um, but obviously if you're doing this along with me please feel free to put your arms in whatever position you like. So I'm really using uh, a contraction here at this speed. I'm thinking about contracting in the obliques <clears throat> excuse me, to pull the hip up and we can take it a little bit faster. So right, left, right, left and I'm still thinking about contracting, 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 contracting. But what if I wanted to build this up to a shimmy? If I went up to a full shimmy and I was thinking about contract, 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 I can't even say it that fast, then I feel like it would everything would get really, really, really tense, yeah? And maybe you might have a bit in the moment that wants a moment of a tense shimmy, but my personal preference is a nice, loose, juicy shimmy that's uh, nice and big and relaxed. And how do we get that? I find that thinking about release rather than contract is where this juicy shimmy comes from. So actually, although when I'm working at a slower speed, I'm really focusing on a nice, clean contraction. When I'm building it up to a shimmy, I'm actually thinking release, 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 release in my brain. And it's not very scientific at all. It's just thinking about like, almost thinking about the energy going down. If I was walking, then like, I don't know. I Although, how do I say this? No, I'm, because I'm not stepping, it's not a down hip, but I'm thinking about releasing the energy down in the same way when I did my taxim, I picked the foot up off the floor and I allow all of the energy to drop out of the hip. It's a little bit difficult to explain. I hope that makes sense. I think you just need to give it a go. Just think releasing that energy down, but still coming from the hips. At the moment, I'm not, um, I don't usually do a knee shimmy or anything like that. I am still keeping my focus on my hips. <clears throat> so from here, we can try this with a three quarter shimmy as well. So I'm gonna do a couple of different timings for you. The first one we're gonna do, which is the one and two and three and four and, which uh, a lot of people like to do. So one and two and, this is obviously a very slow version. It's not quite a shimmy. And at this speed, again, I like to practice this slow so I can get a uh, training, nice, precise timing with my obliques. <coughs> And I've got a little cough, so I'm going to have a sip of water. <coughs> Excuse me. So, from here, we are going to continue with our three-quarter. The same thing happens when you build up the speed, though. This idea of release. So, when I want to go... Uh, more shimmy speed then I'm actually thinking contract release contract release contract release <coughs> and it actually um, fits along with something that I will tell my baby beginners when they're first learning to do this shimmy and I tell them step wiggle step wiggle step wiggle step wiggle so I still want a clean timing but I'm allowing the release to happen after the contraction just to get a nice bit of reverb in there because I've trained it slowly with um, uh, with the metronome and uh, using my obliques I feel that it allows me to do the released version and my body still knows what to do again it's not very scientific but works for me <coughs> so let's try one more timing hopefully my cough will clear in a moment it's a little bit difficult when you're in a live video I can't press pause um, so we're going to do the ATS shimmy, which goes and a one, and a two, and a three, and a four. So the release almost happens before the contraction with this one. So I'm actually on weighted on the leg that I'm not about to step on. And I'm releasing and then stepping on that foot. And that's where the contraction happens. So release, step, release, step, release, step. And a one, and a two, and a one, and a two, and a one, and a two, and a one, and a two. So, this was a very brief video. I want you to go away and have a play with some of these ideas. Um, I've got um, some more material um, which is coming up in a course that I'm going to be bringing out next year, which 
um, is going to go into a lot more detail in these techniques but give this one a go and please drop any questions you have in the comments box and I apologize for my crazy voice and my coughing which came from nowhere this evening um, so bear with me on that and um, please do give me a little thumbs up or a like or share this if you think it's interesting or if you think someone will benefit from it and I feel like this contract release thing is going to be uh, just a part one so your questions might help me develop this a little bit further um, if you need a bit more information on this particularly or we might look at a different part of the body and see how this can work one thing I want you to think about though is that if you don't release then you can't contract so it's if you're contracting all the time we're gonna get really stiff and tense but if you can release, find the release and the space in between each contraction, then you're going to have more space to contract again for a bigger movement. So I hope that makes sense. Um, as I said last time, just give me a thumbs up or a heart if you've watched and enjoyed this. Um, and I will see you next time.